What's up guys, welcome to Wasted Space and we're back in Space Engineers and back with another design that in this case I've kind of done out of popular demand. Some of you guys may have seen the rapier video I did a couple of weeks ago which had yeah, kind of a cool atmospheric fighter using the aerodynamic wings mod. And in the comments on that video there was a whole bunch of people saying that's awesome, now I want to see a bigger, more powerful one, more weapons, more armour, just generally scale that whole idea up and see how it works. So what I have in front of me here is, of course, the old rapier with a new colour scheme and the new one, which I'm going to be calling the broadsword, I think. It doesn't really look like a broadsword, but it's got a certain hilt look to it, and I'm really pleased with how the design in general turned out. really does look kind of mean, and you can see it kind of follows the same theme as the previous one. I will just give it a quick walk around, but there's not a huge amount to it. Uh, this one's using large reactors, which are tucked inside the armour here and then primarily going for the large thrusters. So these two massive thrusters on the bottom alongside some smalls to help out. And the main goal with this was to try and sort of keep that power to weight ratio as high as possible. The only thing you can't really see from the outside or isn't so obvious is maybe you can just about tell, but all this armor in the middle there under the cockpit is heavy. Try and give you a bit of protection from underneath in particular, because that's likely to be where a lot of the anti-aircraft fire is going to be coming from. Now one thing you will notice is I've got this in the world as well. Now some of you guys will recognise this. This is the Keen Fighter from the Easy Start. And the reason this is here is because it's actually really quite comparable. So weaponry wise it's a bit undergunned. We've got more guns on my broadsword here than on that. But weight wise they are very very similar. So if we just jump into the broadsword you can see 67,000 kilograms and Within that 67,000 kilograms we fit everything we need to fly and have pretty high manoeuvrability. Then over here we've got the Keen one, and this has gone for the standard approach, so no wings. We've just got atmospheric thrusters in all directions. And of course, to keep it in the air, it's needing to use these large ones pointing downwards. So if we jump in, you can see this is 69,000 kilograms, so slightly heavier, but only just about. And the reason these are both in here is because I'm going to end this video with a bit of a dogfighting comparison. Try and demonstrate a little bit about why these fighters are so cool when you compare them to what the normal approach would be. Now, yep, some of that's come from a mod, of course, but it's still something I think is interesting and adds some interesting value to how Space Engineers plays. So that's enough talking. Let's go and jump into this, just give you a quick demonstration of how she flies, which is pretty similar to the Rapier, with the exception of... Ooh, that's a nice character bug. Nice to see that uh, the new models... Really? Hmm, okay. Anyway, <laughs> I guess that's a field of view problem. But... You can see that this thing handles a lot like the rapier, but not it's not quite so agile. It feels much more grounded, it feels much more weighty, as you would expect. The other thing I've forgotten to do is the flickering lights actually come from leaving your suit lights on when you get into a ship. So what I'm going to do is just put this thing into its slow down position. Let's get my jetpack on and go and turn my suit lights off. If you ever have that flickering problem in first person in the cockpit, that's what's causing it. And this thing will just be hovering there. It's stopped, just like the other one. This is kind of your standard braking procedure. So, ironically, it looks like I've actually got pretty good at this by this point. Pretty much perfectly vertical. But that's how you come and stop or land it, is you literally you just raise yourself directly upwards and it slows down to a stop really quickly. One of the other things that I quite like about this, and it's not unique to this one in particular, it's something that the rapier can do as well, is some of the manoeuvres you can pull because of how the wings affect you. So one of the reasons we're doing this direct fighter-to-fighter -fighter comparison is this is actually capable of having a lot more focused design because it's using these wings. The wings are very thin. They're quite long, but they're very thin. So you'd imagine if we were to take this same craft and try and match those wings with large atmospheric thrusters, which would be what it would need, you'd end up with a much, much bigger, much, much heavier design. The other thing the wings enable you to do, which of course is the, the sort of plane style stuff, is all the banking maneuvers. And there are a few of these that are particularly cool and help when it comes to the dogfighting side of things. So one of them is obviously, many people will be familiar with the idea of just banking up and doing a banked roll to reverse positions on someone. So if someone's chasing you, you do a banked roll, and the idea is you're still moving by the time you come out of that banked roll, which is great, that's all your standard one. One thing you can do in this because of its maneuverability, however, is literally flip completely, and you notice how quickly, when the character model gets the hell out of the screen, how quickly we gain speed again the other direction. So I'm going to do the same thing, but with the UI open, 100 meters a second, and literally we're just going to flip over 
And the idea is to point downwards. And you can see we just about came to a stop because we do have to reverse our direction of travel. But that takes no time at all. Really good way of coming around on people that are chasing you. The other thing that I've found to do in this, and this is partly to do with how the rear thrusters work to hold it upright, is a kind of funky reversal sort of maneuver. I'll try and do this live, but I have recorded it with some spectator cam footage as well. But it's the idea, I noticed we just passed a cliff that would work nicely for this. So I'm gonna bank round, come back towards this ridge line. And you can imagine that we've got, we've got someone following us, not directly behind, but close enough, we need to shake them off our tail. So as you're coming towards this ridge line, Fire's coming in from behind, and as we disappear over the crest of this hill, we're gonna do a flip. So we're gonna point downwards, and then I'm gonna literally flip the thing around. And hopefully I've done this right, there we go. And we are now sitting, waiting for someone to appear over the top. We can sort of turn ourselves around, and that's a really quick maneuver. But more importantly, and I'll jump into the spectator cam to show you what I mean, you can see how we're now sitting, hugging the side of the hill, is from the point of view of the guy chasing us, he would have seen us approach this hill from this direction and then just disappear downwards. Now the assumption would be, okay, we've dropped in height, we've probably gone left maybe, hugging the cliff, maybe we've gone right. The assumption is not that you've stopped and certainly not stopped. See, at this moment, we still wouldn't be visible. Now you might get a vague idea that look, right way down there, tucked against the hill is where we are waiting to come diving upwards again. Guns blaring, shoot some rockets, get our Gatlings on the go. Big surprise for anybody following us. And of course, you could dive up and then continue to follow him using what I demonstrated earlier by doing that quick flip to get the speed up really quickly. So that's enough demonstrations. I'm quite pleased with this little thing. It flies nice. It looks really cool flying around. One thing I did notice is in this camera view, you kind of get an idea of what the wings are doing. You can see the, the ship seems to move around a little bit. But that's enough talking about that, enough demonstrating. I'm gonna switch over now to some of the dogfighting footage and I'll kind of talk over it just a little bit about why it is that the results are like they are because they're pretty dramatically different to these two fighters. So here we're actually looking from my friend's point of view. So I've got both of our point of views recorded and I'm gonna kind of switch back and forth between them to do a little bit of talking about exactly what the differences are. Now I understand a lot of you guys are probably gonna watch this and go, yeah, but that's a crappy demonstration fighter. I've got ones that are much better than that. Why are you using that thing? And that's fair enough. It was an easy, very similar weight demonstration just to show how much difference the wings alone can make. So here we're looking from his point of view and I've already flown off and we're gonna do it sort of switch around because admittedly this guy doesn't play Space Engineers very much. So I've kind of handicapped myself like this. This is now my point of view by not having the UI on. So I'm gonna play with the UI turned off, although admittedly with the crosshairs on, so at least I can aim. And he's using the UI a fair bit. And most importantly, I have an antenna on board this ship. So once I get close enough, he's gonna be able to work out where I am. And this is the first time I've spotted him. I knew he was around the lake somewhere. And I'm gonna come in round behind and try and catch him unawares. Now, unfortunately, as you can see from his point of view, he's spotted me already. So he brings the thing around to try and sort of return fire. And you can see this is very floaty. It's not really slowing down very much. And more importantly, while I didn't hit him, I was able to go past without any real threat of being shot at. So I think at that point he was using the rocket launchers that are kind of on the front of this thing lower down and none of them came anywhere near me. Now admittedly none of mine did either, but he has already completely lost where I am. Whereas, as you're going to see when we switch back to my point of view in a second, I was back around very, very quickly. So at this point, he's just trying to maneuver to get sights back on me again. He knows I'm shooting him. He can see the little antenna moving around, but unfortunately he's got no real way of spinning the craft fast enough to stop me from coming around on him. So this is the same thing again, where I'm coming up from behind initially, getting a few shots in. I prefer the Gatlings because they're a little bit more reliable. I'll switch between weapons a lot. I dive down to avoid his return fire and then immediately swing back around again. Now, from this point of view, you're gonna be able to see that Right here, he's still trying to slow down. He's going in the other direction and I'm already on his back. Now, admittedly, not aiming particularly well and not doing enough Gatling work, but you can see how much difficulty he's having just trying to bring that thing round to point at me properly. So again, I'm round behind him by the time he swung the vehicle round, I'm already at his back. I've already passed, I've had my run, I've got a few shots on him and now I'm trying to come back round on him again. Now I do lose sight of him for a bit here because he goes up, which I'm not expecting. I was expecting him to continue down, but he rises up. Come round on him, and unfortunately again, the antenna gives away the fact that I'm actually coming down 
from underneath and already doing a run. A couple of rocket shots that almost connect and then another one of these dips down towards the surface to avoid his incoming fire and make him pull up. So you can see he's had to pull up because he's going to hit the ground otherwise, whereas I've done the flip that I was talking about and I'm already right on his tail at this point. He's had to commit too hard and of course it's then inevitable at that point. Two engines off and down he goes. Now I'm pretty certain we're going to switch back to his point of view again for this and you'll see what I mean about how, how much difficulty he's having trying to bring the ship around to get me in sight. And it's purely not nothing to do with top speed obviously, we're going at the same top speed. It's just to do with how quickly I can change direction in that thing. At this point he's just still trying to slow himself down, he's still going backwards. Now he's starting to go forwards again, but by this point I'm again past him, behind him, turned around already, you can just see in the shadow and in that sort of second point of view, and I'm already getting fire in. And I'm kind of unlucky that I don't clip him with the missiles, but once we get there the Gatling do the work and both of the engines off on one side and some pretty nasty damage across the whole vehicle and from there it's pretty inevitable. He's going down. So that's fine and it seems a little unfair. So what we did was then switch them back the other way around. So I'm now flying the sort of keen deterrent fighter and he's flying the broadsword and you can see that again while he's having a bit of difficulty getting used to it and to some extent cheats a little bit here like I haven't even started yet. Give us a chance bro. But doesn't really matter because the point is I know what I'm doing in Space Engineers. I've played a lot, I've flown a lot and so I should be in a much better position than he is to try and keep him in my sights but again you're going to see the same result. Just it's too difficult to try and bring it around even if you're pulling tricks. Now here I've banked vertically to try and slow myself down as fast as possible so that he goes past me and overruns me and just look how easily he can stop and come straight up at me using those wings. He's killed his movement immediately, he's going 100 meters a second very very soon and this is what it looks like from my POV so you can see what I mean. I come in, I know he's behind me so I try and pull a very heavy braking maneuver. Straight upwards use the rear thrusters to hold us up for a second while those four downwards thrusters break really hard which works, he does go past but by the time he's gone past he's already flipped and is coming up at me again. And from this point it's kind of a game of where the hell did that ship go and by the time I notice where it is it's too late. So again his point of view for sort of the next bit of the fight. Again, he's not played a huge amount of Space Engineers, so the rockets might not be the most accurate shots, but they don't need to be because I just can't keep him in my sights. I'm trying desperately at this point to, because I think he's right on my tail, do the same banking maneuver again. And he's not right on my tail, he's still further back. And all it's done is make me an even bigger target. So I'm trying to go upwards, up into the air, try and force him to overrun me again so I can see him pass me and shoot down, which kind of works. But Again, that very, very quick stop down towards the ground. You just can't keep it in sight. So again, from my point of view, he's coming in behind now. I know he's around. I'm trying to find him. I'm not using the UI, of course, to try and give myself a little bit of a handicap. Not that it was needed in this case. Try and stop myself and then go to the sky to get up high. Get, allow him, kind of force him to fly by underneath me which as I said does kind of work, I'm raising here trying to go up as fast as I can, these things respond quite slowly so he does come back underneath me. But then the speed, the length of time I actually get to get guns on him before he's off back in a completely different direction is not enough to do any real damage. Now I probably should have tried to get a rocket hit in there but you know, you do make mistakes, whatever you want to say, not perfect play but you can get what I mean. I'm struggling to keep this thing at speed, I'm struggling to keep him in sight and I'm struggling to keep it under control. All the while he's capable of just pulling these really quick turns and keeping me in sight pretty much non-stop. Now of course this one ended up being a bit longer than the first fight because that was where you've got the experienced player versus the inexperienced player and the inexperienced players in the weaker of the two ships so it was quite quick. This way around I'm doing my best to try and get some shots on him, to try and do any sort of damage. I know that this thing can't take the hits really. If I do get rockets onto it, it's going to go down. But unfortunately, the same is pretty, pretty much true for any small ship. If you land a rocket hit on it, it's going to go poof. It's going to miss something that means it can fly. So I kind of get lucky and at no point does he really manage to land these rocket hits, although that was really, really close. I'm still trying to pull the ship round. He's so close behind so much of the time that by the time I've pulled round, he's already passed, he makes the turn quicker than I do, and I'm just back in the sights again. Desperately trying to get up into the air, and yeah, the end result is 
as you would expect, pretty much inevitable. And from my point of view here, you can see I've tried to go high and really try and get some shots on him, just get a position where he's coming at me from a distance. And I get a couple of shots. They don't land because it's a thin ship. It's actually quite hard to hit with the rockets. And then as soon as he's past me, that's it. I've lost him again. He's turned around so much more quickly. And at this point, of course, it's pretty much inevitable. Now, unfortunately, this fight does actually end with more of a crash than a confirmed kill. But it was a crash that one of the two ships wandered away from and the other one didn't. So read into that what you like. Kind of a different thing for me doing a kind of post-commentary to a bit of gameplay, but maybe you guys found that interesting. I thought it was an interesting way of talking a bit about, well, really why I think these wings make for a really fun fighter. And there was even a little bit of footage that I decided not to use because the battle went on for too long, where I tried to fight the rapier versus the broadsword. So we followed this up with the rapier, the little one, with me flying it against the broadsword, the big one. And that was amazingly good fun. Two maneuverable craft, one that's slightly slower, slightly less maneuverable, but at the same time has got way more power. The other one that's struggling to do proper damage and can only survive by keeping out of sight. And they're hilariously good fun. So I figured I'd show you a little bit of kind of what they're like if you're actually using the first person. Hopefully you enjoyed that, guys. If you did, as usual, please hit like, please hit subscribe. It does really help me in the channel out. And if you didn't, you know where that dislike button is. By all means, click that. But also, please leave me a comment and let me know what you guys think and how I can improve. So thanks a lot for watching, and I'll catch you next time.